Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for this special call with Tony Khan to discuss the upcoming Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor pay-per-view event. So uh, per custom, just a few quick housekeeping items in the interest of time and giving everyone the opportunity to ask as many people or ask as many or give as many people the opportunity to ask a question. We're going to ask that you refrain from asking two-parted questions if possible. And we definitely want to ask that you keep your questions and the conversation focused best you can on the upcoming Ring of Honor show. Uh, and very important, as Robin mentioned, please make sure your phone is unmuted. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tony for some opening thoughts, and we're going to open the lines for your questions. Tony? Thank you, Jim. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. I'm very excited about Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor coming up tomorrow night. It's going to be an amazing pay-per-view. There's so much excitement around the card. Uh, we have an, one more go-home episode of the Ring of Honor TV show tonight on watchroh.com. There's been great reception to that show, our fifth episode of the series tonight. I'm very much looking forward to it. And I'm also, just in general, excited about a lot of things happening in the world of wrestling, in particular in Ring of Honor and in AEW, frankly. And I know this might uh, steer some of the attention and direction uh, to AEW, but I'm also a big believer in both companies and the complementary nature of owning AEW and Ring of Honor and the, the way that they can co correlate and be related. And I have some very exciting news coming on AEW Dynamite on Wednesday. I'm very excited about that, and hopefully we can all reconvene and talk about some of those things, but uh, in addition to what's going to happen next week in AEW, I think there's going to be a lot of buzz on the world of Ring of Honor this weekend, and obviously a lot of things happening in the world of wrestling, but the fact that there's this much excitement about the Ring of Honor event, and I believe we have the chance to do the single best event in wrestling this week with Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor, and that ROH has grown to new business heights, and we have the most streaming subscribers in the history of Ring of Honor while still maintaining a, the best pay-per-view numbers in the history of Ring of Honor and live attendance marks. And I also feel like there's a place for Ring of Honor in the space and the universe of wrestling that exists outside of AEW, but peripheral AEW. And there are many reasons why the promotions can and will complement each other very well. And I think this was a very astute purchase. ROH, and now one year after we completed the purchase and uh, my first event, the, the handover event in some ways, where it was a transition, uh, my first show as the booker, but still finalizing some of the ownership agreement and uh, dealing with uh, some legacy personnel. A year later, looking back, these are some of the most important relationships in my life. No relationship uh, now that I uh, look back at and hold more value on the year that we spent together in the time with ROH, more so than I'm really grateful that I got to know Jamin Pugh, that I got to know Jay Briscoe and the Briscoe family, and that I got to work with him. Uh, he's one of the greatest wrestlers I've ever produced, and he was a good friend, and I really like, liked him a lot, and I obviously uh, like Mark a lot, and now working with Mark Briscoe and, and having this show that we can do uh, to continue to pay, legacy, pay tribute to the great life and legacy of Jay Briscoe, and I've never seen such an outpouring of love and support as I did around his passing, and I think it would make him very proud, and just like we were able to celebrate his birthday with a great match in AEW, and we did a great tribute show in Ring of Honor, I do think we can continue paying tribute to him, and I'm very excited about Mark Briscoe versus Samoa Joe for the TV title. I'm very excited about the Jay Briscoe Reach for the Sky Memorial ladder match, and so many things on this show, and everything on the show, top to bottom, is a tribute to him, but not just this one show, everything we do going forward. And uh, with that, I can start taking questions, but obviously that, that's a lot right there. Uh, so maybe I answered one or two of them, but I would certainly love to, you know, expound or elaborate on anything I just said, too. Um, I'm a little bit looser than Jim. I'm the good cop here. So uh, if it is a two-parted question, I will do my best. But like he said, sometimes it's hard to, answer two-parters, and I'll also stay on as long as I can to make sure um, you all get good answers to your questions. So with that, uh, we can start answering them. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thanks, Tony. 
And I'm not a bad cop here, okay? I'm just trying to run the show here. So here we go. Hey, okay. man, we have a you you do you do you do a great job of it. You keep me on time and uh, accountable to these folks. Thanks, man. Oh, good. And we have we have a lot of people that are uh, really uh, fired up to ask you some questions, Tony. So we're going to start with Brian Zillum from PW Torch, and then I'm going to ask uh, Katrina Blake from Women's Wrestling Talk to be ready uh, after uh, Brian gets his question. Brian, you're up. Tony, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hi, Brian. Uh, good to talk to you, Tony. It's great to talk to you. Uh, thanks for taking the time today, and uh, good luck this weekend on the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Thank uh, you. Tony, I just want to really ask you, like, can you explain the thought and detail that went into uh, making the video package for uh, Kingston and uh, Claudio for the uh, potential main event for the Ring of Honor show? And also, could you see potentially more video packages like that uh, further along in not only Ring of Honor, but potentially maybe AEW, especially if there's a long history of uh, a rivalry, so to say, uh, with the uh, wrestlers? Well, in AEW and in the era that I've been running Ring of Honor since last year's Supercard event, I've tried to always respect the history of wrestling and of the wrestlers. So if you look back, there's been a lot of historical video packages where we've played off the history. And also, when Claudio came in, I know he has uh, a past with Eddie, and they have history, and it's not all good history, and a lot of it's very bad, but they had a friendship, and uh, they're both very professional, and it's one of those matches where the people genuinely don't get along, but they uh, are willing to work together and have a match, and I think I am immediately embrace this and if you look back at that video package really it captured a lot of history that was told before aew and even outside of roh but then uh they're both they both have a history in roh before they came to aew and then in aew their pads really crossed last summer when claudio arrived and of course they were on the same team in the blood and guts match and in what could have been one of the real highlight moments in Eddie Kingston's career as he had an opportunity to get the tap out win over Chris Jericho. It was, of course, Claudio who came in and took the win, took the moment, and it was Claudio's music that played at the end of one of the most important AEW events. And now in Ring of Honor, Claudio is the world champion. Claudio has made a lot of headlines. And of course, we've seen the Blackpool Combat Club have a darker attitude, a darker side in recent weeks and months. And Claudio is a huge part of that. And he casts a big shadow over the world of wrestling, and he's the Ring of Honor world champion and a dominant player in the history of ROH. And that's why I think it's so fitting he's here. So I really respect the history of wrestling. But to give the most credit to any one person for that package existing and going to Joseph and getting at Joseph Weirdness and having him uh, narrate it and use the storytelling, a lot of what he'd already made and existed, and then completing that story to, to up getting it up to date it's obviously a, a, a very complex rivalry but also catching up I guess not and and telling a more accurate not it, it's far from a complete story but at least to date now we, we've gone back and updated with aew and the ring of honor and the things that have been happening in these careers for Claudio and Eddie Kingston the person I give the most credit to for the package existing is Eddie Kingston I was actually at Eddie Kingston's house and he suggested to make it and it was a great idea and he's a brilliant mind for wrestling and he showed me the old package i knew they had the history and he said we could do this for the match and i thought it was brilliant and it's just a good example of the great insights of eddie king uh and i'm very excited for the match and i thought the package did a great job telling their story and you know i'm very excited to see how this plays out at supercard tomorrow night on pay-per-view all right. <clears throat> Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Tony. Katrina Blake from Women's Wrestling Talk. You are up next, and Katrina will be followed by Trevor Robb from the Edmonton Journal. Katrina? Hi. Good afternoon, Tony. Hope all is well. Uh, so my question is, uh, with this new iteration of Ring of Honor, which has been a good purchase, and you have some amazing women already on the roster, but um, what I guess what do you have going forward for the women's wrestler uh, for the women's roster, not only with this pay-per-view, but going forward with the new iteration of Ring of Honor? 
Well, I'm very excited about what we've been able to do with some top women's stars in Ring of Honor. Since I purchased it, I think we've had some amazing matches, and some of the best matches on the show have been uh, involving the women's roster. In particular, I thought the main event of our second episode of ROH Weekly TV, Athena versus Willow Nightingale, was one of the best matches we've had, period, in Ring of Honor, TV or pay-per-view. And it was a great main event, and it got a lot of people talking and a lot of positive buzz on the product, on the company, on the champion and the challenger. Everybody really won in that match. And, of course, Athena did come out with the victory, retain the championship. She is wrestling again tonight against Emi Sakura on Ring of Honor's weekly show. And then we are going to continue uh, uh, on. We've got a big title match on the pay-per-view as well. I'm very excited about that. And there's just a lot to be looking forward to, I think, on the roster right now, because if you watch the weekly shows, I think fans have seen a number of great women's matches and people with potential, people that have wrestled in AEW and also some that haven't appeared um, as much in AEW. And it's also introduced uh, a lot of people, I believe, to some younger wrestlers that are doing great things. And for wrestlers that are homegrown AEW stars like Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale, who have a lot of upside and we really believe in, it's also been great to give them opportunities in Ring of Honor where there's different it, – it, it's the same expectation to go out and have a great match, but it's a little bit of a different format, and there aren't the constraints of live television or commercial breaks, and it's a different kind of formatting, and I'm targeting to more of a hardcore base. So I can do things that will, I think, help everybody. And it's been one of the reasons why Ring of Honor is such a great complementary product to AEW is because it exists to cater to the hardcore fans and circumvents some aspects of traditional wrestling television, which puts less pressure on all of us in some ways and uh, makes it even easier to focus on and deliver great wrestling shows like we've been doing at ROH, including a lot of the great women's matches we've had. And I'm looking forward to this pay-per-view uh, for a number of reasons, including the women's championship match and uh, where it's going to leave us going forward for Ring of Honor TV as we set up next week and continue th this really new journey in ROH. Next week will be week six of the television, and it'll be the first time we've done it coming off a of pay-per-view. So we'll be filming sh the show in New York next week, and this is a huge pay-per-view event in Los Angeles, and I think uh, the women in ROH have played a great role, including, like I said, uh, in one of the first TV shows, having a great main event match with Athena and Willow, but also Athena came back after that and had another great match, and I expect another great match with Athena tonight against Emi Sakura and a great championship match at the pay-per-view. So thanks for asking. Thanks, Katrina. <clears throat> um, Trevor Robb from the Edmonton Journal is next, and then I'm going to follow Trevor with a write-in question from Joe Williamson from Hollywood's World of Sports. Trevor, you're up. Hey, Tony. Thanks so much uh, for taking my question today. Uh, AEW recently announced the Edmonton debut of Dynamite and Rampage as part of the six-day Canadian tour coming this summer. I'm curious when plans for this tour started and what it is about the Canadian market that made you decide to ultimately expand into Western Canada. And might we see an ROH show or tour come to Canada in the near future? Thank you. Well, it's a great question. Thanks. And I'm very excited about AEW coming to Canada again in the summer. We've run a few successful shows now in Toronto and Winnipeg and look forward to running more shows in Canada. It's been very successful from a live events perspective, and we continue to see great growth in our international TV ratings. Uh, in addition to the huge ratings data we released today saying that uh, – According to ITV, we've been a huge driver of viewers and viewers in the key demos and in key advertising markets to ITV, the biggest commercial TV network in England. And in also in Canada, with our partnership with TSN now, we've seen great growth in our TV ratings there. And we recently just did our record rating on TSN for the episode in Winnipeg a couple weeks ago. 
And I believe we have a lot of great Canadian stars in AEW, and there are so many wrestling fans in Canada. Canada has so much of a rich history in the wrestling business and historical figures from Canada and great matches that have taken place there. And it's certainly a, one of the top markets for AEW in terms of live events and television, and we'll continue to expand and do more big events there. And this summer is a great taste of how strongly we feel about the Canadian market, and it's, it's great for us. Thanks for asking. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, here's my right. Here's the write-in question coming here now, Tony, from Joe Williamson from Hollywood's World of Sports. Chris Mueller from the Bleacher Report. Be ready uh, after Tony responds to Joe's question, which is: With all the various independent shows in LA that are happening this weekend, are you going to scout for any talent that may be appropriate for Ring of Honor? That's a great question. I am always scouting those shows and will be scouting uh, in Los Angeles this weekend, uh, other events, but have also watched a lot of these independent shows and international events throughout the year. And that's how we've been able to identify some of these great names. And there's a number of people who work in AEW identifying these names, but I try and stay current, stay on top of who some of the top young names are. And I think that's helped us in both companies, AEW and ROH, that we have a lot of people in the office who love wrestling and love to watch domestic independent wrestling and in particular international wrestling where a lot of the names coming in this weekend a lot of the best wrestlers and what makes the weekend so special are a lot of the international names and obviously this pay-per-view ring of honor supercard has great examples of that where there's a lot of international dream matches and exciting things on this show that for the hard catering to the hardcore audience and we were able to present i think what was a, a dream match to the hardcore audience and present it in a way to even a casual mainstream fan where Kenny Omega versus Vikingo was a dream match that delivered in many ways. Well, now uh, we've introduced Vikingo to a, a worldwide TV audience on AEW Dynamite with millions of people see the show each week all over the world and also with Commander participating in the Face of the Revolution ladder match. I'm really a big fan of both, both guys. I think they're both tremendous. And... I would like to feature them both more in AEW, and I also respect their international commitments. I'm very excited. Uh, Bandito is one of the great examples of uh, an international wrestler who I'd seen in Ring of Honor in particular. And, of course, he was on All In, and he's a tremendous talent. He's, he's somebody who actually signed with ROH when we started AEW and was loyal to ROH, which is great. And then... When I acquired ROH, he had been the lineal champion, and I really like working with him, and uh, he's one of a number of my international wrestlers who I really like who have had to renew their visas, and it's nothing nefarious. It's just that they, it's a process that for when you use international talent for a company that does the bulk of its business domestically, then you're going to see visa renewals, and you deal with it, whether it's in AEW or in English football, where there's you have to process visas and deal with work permits and things of that nature, bring in international players. So uh, I really uh, was very excited to get Bandito's stuff all settled, and I think he's been a great example of somebody that uh, has a great chance to excel in both promotions and internationally. So I think I will be watching this weekend, but I do think a lot of the best wrestlers who've come in are the international ones, but you also want to look for North American top talent, or in this case, I guess, domestic domestic North American or Canadian talent, uh, in addition to all the great luchadors and wrestlers from outside North America that come into the weekend, you're always looking for uh, somebody who's flying under the radar that could be great given the opportunity in AEW or ROH. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> Chris Mueller from Bleacher Report is next, and we're going to follow Chris with Brandon Thurston from WrestleNomics. Chris, you are on. Hi, Doc. Hey, Tony. So I wanted to talk about Wheeler Yuta versus Shibata. This is a pretty high-profile match for him. And with him only being 26, he seems to be one of the biggest standout guys you have on the roster under the age of 30 these days. Uh, what has it been like charting his growth kind of since he started with the company and what kind of future do you see him having with either AEW or ROH? He's a future top star in this business. I really believe he has so much potential and he already is a major star that has accomplished a lot. He's been a two-time Ring of Honor pure champion. He's had 
uh, some success in ROH before he came to AEW, and we have a great group of young talent who were here from the beginning, and then I really tried to replenish things with AEW Dark and developmental opportunities, and a lot of these things now also exist for people to get opportunities and exposure in ROH. And I really took to him in 2021. Some really smart wrestlers recommended that I check him out, and I watched him. And to be honest, uh, he wasn't, it wasn't even, I was getting pushed to sign him. It was just like under the match that people said was good, and I watched it, and I really liked him, and then I asked about him. And we brought him in for dark. And around that time, a number of people came in. We had had some success pushing some acts onto television, like the acclaimed and powerhouse Hobbs. And uh, they had done really well coming from AEW Dark. And then I felt like I really, now that they had gone to TV, I need to replenish things. So I brought in Wheeler Yuta, Daniel Garcia, who's obviously also wrestling on this card against Tanahashi and had a great match last night against Adam Cole in his return and is, uh, many ways, the rival and peer of Wheeler Yuta. They came in around the same time and had had a rivalry on the independents, and I thought I could feature them both in parallel paths, almost in AEW, like a next generation of that first crop of people that we came in with. And I paired Garcia up with, at the time they were called 2.0, Matt Menard and Angelo Parker, Jeff and Matt. And uh, they were called, uh, I'd seen them called 3.0, but I called them 2.0 in AEW because I didn't want people to get confused and think Garcia was part of the team. Yuta is somebody I really like a lot. I think has a ton of upside and just a really good person that you want in your locker room that everybody likes and respects and has come so far in a couple of years. I have been an advocate of his, and it's the. It, I think everybody would would remember this that uh, the second match he did with John Moxley, I actually pushed that he would be in that spot. And I thought it would be real growth for him because even if he wasn't winning the match, and frankly, even though it wasn't a long match, it would show growth from their first match against each other, which was also a character-building match where John ran through him, and their second match was more competitive. Then the third match, I actually met up with John and asked him about wrestling that match, which was in Massachusetts on Rampage last April. And I felt really strongly that they could do that match there, and it would help everybody, and that this guy would break through and, and be on the verge of being one of the next stars for us. And it was everything I thought it could be and more. John gave so much when the match was so great and he put so much into it. And then Yuta, and they and they really bonded. And now we've seen in the Blackpool Combat Club the relationship that they have and Claudio's been and taken to him as a friend. And then now they're so close. And you see Claudio and Yuta in AEW and Ring of Honor, the Blackpool Combat Club, one of the dominant stables in wrestling and and now you have these two great champions in ring of honor claudio castagnoli and wheeler yuda and i think for him to be there with those top wrestlers in addition to them one of the greatest wrestlers in AEW history and possibly the, one of the greatest wrestlers ever and certainly one of the greatest wrestlers in roh's history is brian danielson and brian danielson i think is another person who has been a tremendous influence on him and putting him around the best mentor, somebody who already had all, all, all these skills and brought so much to the table, I think it's, it's done a lot for him. Then you have the legend, Mr. Shibata, who is one of the great pro wrestlers of this generation of my uh, lifetime of watching wrestling. He's one of the great stars from Japan, and it's also one of the great stories. And I think now, with so much information at our fingertips, even for people who aren't intimately familiar with it, we've We've had a lot of people that have been able to catch up and learn how inspirational the story is. It's not altogether dissimilar from some of the things we've seen on All Access that we get to look at up close every Wednesday after Dynamite going forward with Adam Cole, speaking of great former ROH stars. Uh, and, uh, you know, we the, the comeback that Shibata made from his brain injuries it is so inspirational, and nobody thought he would be in this position. He's probably one of the least likely people, maybe even more so than Adam Cole or Brian Danielson. Uh, we've just talked about, again, two great stars have competed in ROH, maybe even more unlikely than either of them to return to the ring, honestly. It's very unlikely that Chibata would be in this position, but it, we've navigated it. He worked so hard to be in this position, and a lot of people learned about Chibata. I wanted to bring in a special commentator. We had Mike Tyson, who did a great job calling the Orange Cassidy versus Chibata match. When Chibata returned to the ring, here in America, and he's had a couple matches now, and he's looked very good. Uh, but this is this could be his toughest test because the Blackpool Combat Club 
is running so hot right now, and Orange Cassidy wasn't necessarily trying to take his head off. He wanted to have a very competitive wrestling match. Orange Cassidy, believe it or not, does take a lot of pride in the wrestling, and I think that's one of the secrets of why he's been so effective as a wrestler in AEW and as a, a draw on TV and digital and many other ways. And I think that, uh, in particular, he's another person that was a really good influence on Yuta and is probably a common link between Yuta and Shibata in many ways and that he's wrestled both of them and has trained with both of them and knows them both very well. And I think there's, you know, styles make fights. This is really interesting because the aggressive style of the Blackpool Combat Club is very different from that of Orange Cassidy, who's going to go around roll, you know, unless you try to take his off, head off. And then we've seen when uh, the best friends have to get down and dirty, nobody does it better than Orange Cassidy and the best friends in those kind of situations. Like when it came down to it against Santana Ortiz in the parking lot fight, and Orange Cassidy popped out of the trunk. They're very resourceful when they have to be. And Wheeler Yuta learned all that at the, at the feet of Orange Cassidy and then learned a lot now at the feet of some of the top names in wrestling, John Moxley and, uh, of course, Brian Danielson and the Ring of Honor World Champion Claudio Castagnoli. So there's a lot to be excited about in the match, and I'm looking forward to tonight's ROH TV on WatchROH.com. The shows have been great every Thursday night. It's a really reliable wrestling show. It goes by it's so quick. It's unbelievable how much content we get in. And I have a lot of fun doing it. The wrestlers are having a lot of fun. And we're able to present these kinds of fun matches like tomorrow night, live on pay-per-view, Friday night, March 31st in Los Angeles, Wheeler Yuta versus Katsuyori Shibata for the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Brandon Thurston from WrestleNomics is next. And I'm going to follow Brandon with a write-in question from Dave Meltzer from Wrestling Observer. Brandon. I still need to talk to you again. Hey, thank you. So I, I was wondering with um, there's been some some uh, talk in public of late about uh, conflict between you know, whether that's uh, CM Punk's issues with with various people. Uh, so I was, I was wondering as a you know as the lead executive and as a manager of talent, what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned over the last four years about how to manage wrestling talent? I think there's a lot of things from when I got into the business to today. I mean, I've learned so many things. I, certainly, there's no benchmarking for getting into this. We launched a challenger promotion for which there was real no direct precedent. It had been already operated in the market conditions uh, we were trying to operate under. And, and frankly, in this era of social media and digital, it had never been done before. And it, we're still growing and, and learning from uh, things to this day. And I, I have great conversations every day that help me try to run the business better than the day before or the week before. That, and I think AEW is in a really strong place. And now ROH too, both companies in a, in a really strong place uh, thanks to the great wrestlers and the great wrestling fans. And I believe the shows for both companies have been really great. I think AEW, the TV has been really great episodes and, you know, the fan feedback and everything we get back as far as the, the response from our fans has told us that like the people who watch the show feel like it's been really strong lately and Revolution was one of our best pay-per-views and performed really well. And I felt like we came off it with, with great TV and Ring of Honor has done great pay-per-view numbers and now has had great TV, which is a new element. And going into Supercard, I'm really excited about where where all the wrestlers I have under contract, where, the, where as the, on the aggregate, where we stand. I think there's really exciting things happening in AEW and chances to grow AEW and uh, become a bigger, better company and take advantage of the market conditions where there's real opportunities for a challenger brand with the level of world-class wrestlers, world-class production and big wrestling matches that AEW has, but also now Ring of Honor is a stronger promotion through the partnership and the ownership and I'm able to present pay-per-views like Supercard now, where I think this could be the best pay-per-view we've done yet for Ring of Honor, which is frankly saying something because uh, so much of the DNA of these pay-per-views has been FTR and the Briscoes. This will be the first one that I have done that did not have 
Jay and Mark Briscoe versus FTR, and frankly, FTR and Jay are not on it. So I've only got one of the four yet. I feel like by doing so many things to strengthen the roster and take advantage of the synergies and and do things to elevate people where we can get the best of you know, I can't give everybody every single opportunity, but I'm trying to get the most people the right opportunities. And I think it's going really well right now. So um, I'm really excited for Supercard and everything going forward. Uh, and I want to continue to, to grow the company and have a balance between locker room health and growth. And a lot of times you can do both. And overall, I think it has been a lot of the successes of AEW and the new Ring of Honor is we have a lot of great wrestlers. And um, I have to continue to find the balance between the health of the box office and the, the strength of the locker room. And frankly, I think both things are in a good place right now. And I want to keep it that way by continuing to do great shows and hopefully keep pleasing the most important people to please, which are the wrestling fans and our network bosses and continue to create more opportunities for the wrestlers of AEW and the fans of AEW and now the wrestlers of ROH and the fans of ROH. Uh, so I've learned a lot and continue to learn a lot. And uh, it's a challenging job. They don't really write a book on it. And I, I think the best explanation I can give of it, I've given it, you know, publicly and privately and say it a lot is that it's probably the closest thing. And you say it to people in the TV business and they probably have a closer understanding of both these worlds because they're both things that exist in entertainment is it's like being the coach of a football team. And I think somebody could, uh, you could have two different coaches. You could have, uh, Andy Reid or Doug Peterson would might call a completely different game than Sean McVay or Kyle Shanahan. And you could take the same players and get different results. And I think all four would do a great job, whether you had Doug Peterson, Andy Reid, Sean McVay, or Kyle Shanahan, but they all might do different stuff. And Sean might do some stuff more similar to Kyle and Doug might do some stuff more similar to Andy, but uh, they are all going to give you great results, but you might see completely different plays and completely different situations in the exact same down distances and defensive looks. And, I think they have. They all have a great command of the locker room. They're all great people. Just as examples of offensive-minded head football coaches who run football teams. There's only really one other wrestling organization that has the size of TV production or the scope that we operate in. They have been doing it longer, and they have more hours of content on TV, and have had a lot of advantages and learned a lot. And I think to come into this, uh, we've had a lot of success. And I love that we can keep learning from what's happening and, and try to grow in the industry because I think it is an industry that is served very well when there are multiple strong companies. And, I, and hopefully that continues to drive a lot of interest in pro wrestling. And for me, I hope it continues to drive a lot of interest in AEW and ROH. And running those businesses, it's a little bit like being that, that football coach who has come to come in and you're going to call – the game, as you see it in the style of the stuff you know, and you're constantly learning, and that's why I know firsthand from working with Doug in the office and being around him and knowing a lot of football coaches and having spent many hours in the office, like the command he has, it's, it's for me personally, it's the best I've seen. And I, I am in awe of the way he learns from the different games not that we're not even playing in, but he watches the league and the, the, his command of, understanding why people do things and, and soaking up that knowledge and then trying to apply things that aren't even happening in, in the Jaguars. And I think that in the world of wrestling, uh, you know, you, whether it's happening in AEW, ROH, or outside, try to learn from it. And, and that definitely includes stuff that's happened here. Um, and also try to do what's best for the organization. And he's also a top at that. But Doug calling the game, he might call something completely different from what somebody else would call in that situation, but they're both great. And... I also believe there's similar, there's very few people that have been in the position that the, the top coaches have been in, but there's also very few people that have the command or the respect or the understanding to do all the various things that the coach does as the CEO. It's like a hybrid of being a coach of a team and the producer of a Broadway musical. When you deal with live live productions, you're putting on live shows, you have a, ca a cast of characters, a wild cast, but they're athletes. It's not. It's, it's a different kind of uh, sports fuel, and that's why I compare it almost a hybrid of the two jobs because, you know, sometimes you have to put the understudy in, but that's like the backup in football, but there's definitely entertainment elements of it. 
with a cast of characters, it's a little bit different from running a football team. But I tried to learn from what's happened over the years and, and make the shows better. And I, you know, I think uh, most of all, the reason it's been a business success is wrestling fans are awesome and there are so many of them in the world. And we've been able to create awareness in this big market of AEW and create a company that's performed on live events and pay-per-views and all these benchmarks and continues to hit these benchmarks better than any wrestling company in over two decades and even stronger than the strongest challenger brand of all time that was the ultimate challenger brand that lived the dream. And, you know, famously for 83 weeks, they were the number one company. And that was WCW and all the strengths and highs they hit. But the fact is that one year after the 83-week streak, we're doing better pay-per-view numbers than they were. And so it's about sustaining it and being here today. And that's where I'm very excited about the opportunity I have to continue presenting AEW events and this ROH pay-per-view and, and hopefully learn from everything. So thanks, Brandon, for asking that. And hopefully I was able to give a nuanced answer, even if I didn't answer everything specifically you might have wanted. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Tony. Dave Meltzer from Wrestling Observer has a writing question, which I'll share in a minute. Amy Nemedy from WrestleJoy, you will be following my write-in or Dave's write-in question, which is this. Tony, is there any update of Honor Club subscribers and any thoughts on new news regarding Ring of Honor business and growth? Yes. We're at about 15,000 subscribers for the weekly TV going into last night. I think that's probably roughly what we had. We've continued to grow, uh, we, which is in the streaming business. You know, we're seeing subscriber growth, you might have somebody whose subscription lapses, but if you're adding net positive, you have more signups than you do ex expirations or cancellations, then you're continuing to see growth, which we have seen and are seeing. So we're up to 15,000 subscribers on the weekly series, uh, which is amazing for the library and the weekly shows and the uh, old pay-per-view library. Of course, this pay-per-view event, this is on Bleach Report Fight. Uh, in 90 days, I plan to put this event up there, and uh, but the old we have a library of old shows. But this, we've been able to build a pay-per-view business for the a la carte pay-per-view offerings, and the demand for Supercard of Honor, Death Before Dishonor, Final Battle, and now to come back and do our second Supercard of Honor at, under Ring of Honor, we've had the record pay-per-view numbers for ROH unquestionably, and it's it's amazing. And last year in three shows. We did, uh, you know, close to 100,000 buys across three shows, and pretty amazing. And all three delivered great numbers. And now to come back with Supercard and be able to do a pay-per-view business and have the streaming service, too, it's like having your cake and eating it, too. And for ROH, there's that much excitement about what we're doing that I think we give people really good value on their money. I really do. I think for $10 a month, the wrestling you get on Honor Club, if you're a hardcore wrestling fan, it's great. It's a great value. If you if, some, if it's somebody that has an appetite outside of AEW Dynamite, AEW Rampage, AEW All Access, and now any other wrestling content we're offering, like Dark Elevation or anything else, there's great opportunities to make new wrestling fans with those people that see a wider base due to the penetration of AEW around the world to make uh, more fans for ROH than they've ever had before. So I think that's been the strategy by continuing to do great shows that we know a hardcore wrestling fan is going to love, and no show has embodied that spirit more so than Supercard of Honor this weekend. I think it's, this for a hardcore wrestling fan, I think it's the single best night of wrestling, best event there's going to be. And I'm really excited for tomorrow night, for Friday night. And to Dave's question, yeah, the streaming service now at 15,000, that's the highest in the history of Ring of Honor. And we, when we remember that we started from scratch. It wasn't like we were building off uh, people that had been sitting on their subscriptions. We, we uh, voided everything and had new signups during the transition period. And I actually acquired uh, this platform. It was in part already a lot of the work had been done. And it was one of the reasons why I thought that the acquisition of ROH when I did it made sense because there was a lot of infrastructure in place and a lot of assets, including what is now a great streaming service that is available on watchroh.com and continues to grow. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Amy and Ebony from WrestleJoy is next, and Will Washington from Grap City will follow Amy. Amy, you're on. Hi, Tony. 
I wanted to talk to you about the Reach for the Sky ladder match. Surely this yeah. is going to be a very emotional match with a lot of importance um, around the Briscoes and, of course, the passing of the beloved Jay Briscoe. You have some of the best tag teams in wrestling that are vying for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship with this match. You've also said that you're retiring the old design and unveiling a new version of the tag team titles. Can you talk about how you've put this ladder match together, sort of the input of Mark Briscoe, and will this become a Ring of Honor tradition sort of akin to AEW's Face of the Revolution ladder match? Well, it's a great series of great questions, and this is a great example of where I, I'm happy to answer all the questions, and uh, if I forget any of them, Amy, you can feel free to remind me what I might have missed, but I'm so excited for the J.A. Briscoe Memorial Reach for the Sky ladder match. The way it was conceived, was I, we were talking about uh, the show and about Ring of Honor and AEW, and I was talking with some people in my office, and uh, the suggestion came up from somebody who had known him, and I would maybe uh, have remained nameless here because the person is uh, a villain in the world of wrestling, but they have a lot of uh, good ideas, and I thought it was a great one. And it's, uh, you know, I'm, if I hear an idea, it's the best idea, and it's available for us to do. I always want to do that whenever possible, and this was an idea somebody suggested in the room, and I thought it was a great idea. And uh, to be honest, I'll just say it was QT. Uh, you might, you might say, I hated person on TV, but it was a great idea. And I thought I was like, yeah, that's the best idea I've heard for sure. And, uh, and he knew Jay Briscoe, unlike Jay Briscoe and thought it was a, a, a nice idea. And then I ran it by Mark and Mark loved it. And Mark, then I told him kind of what I wanted to do. And of course, Mark is chasing the television title. He's never held the TV title and he's had shots. He's had a lot of opportunities. He's chased the TV title and, and he, you know, in many ways, like the Susan Lucci uh, that has had so many opportunities and yet not been able to get that, that Ring of Honor World TV Championship and become the great single star that we did see Jay Briscoe have that singles breakout win and become a great world champion. And Mark Briscoe, I believe, has that capability to be a great single star, be a great world TV champion in a Ring of Honor. I'm very excited about Mark Briscoe versus Samoa Joe one-on-one, -on -one, but Mark also was very clear that he didn't want to go back into a tag match or be in tag matches. And, you know, he would like to do singles and trios or multi-mans, but not do tag matches. And that was something that made a lot of sense. And obviously I want to do what makes Mark most comfortable. And he was very comfortable with the idea of the reach for the sky ladder match. He's been having great singles matches and also as a trio with the Lucha brothers had some really exciting matches. And I think there's a lot of opportunities for other great singles matches and trios matches and combinations with Mark. But for this, uh, on this pay-per-view, for him to be wrestling Samoa Joe, who is a Ring of Honor Hall of Famer in the inaugural class, along with the Briscoes, and to have uh, somebody who is a, a great star in ROH's history and in the history of the Briscoes, like Samoa Joe, who is the Ring of Honor World TV Champion and one of the best wrestlers in the world, that is a really exciting match on the card involving the Briscoe family, but also the Jay Briscoe Reach for the, lad uh, Reach for the Sky Ladder match is something we're very excited about and having these great teams in the match like Aussie Open, Top Light, The Kingdom, The Lucha Brothers, and of course, Roosh and Draglistico. I'm really excited about uh, the, the wrestlers in the match. I'm excited about the concept and uh, it is something maybe potentially you could see. I think we could do uh, in the future, although I, it was obviously conceived in the moment of uh, something we never anticipated happening. So it's, it's coming up very, very quickly. It's been a very emotional time these, these last few months for a lot of people. Um, I can only imagine uh, for, the, for the Pew family, the people uh, who don't know that's the Briscoes and the Briscoe family, the, the parents, Mark and, Mark and his wife and, and the, the whole family, uh, the extended family and their friends and the people who are like family to them. It's a very wide network, and there's a big outpouring of love and support, but it really what it helped carry so many people through, ironically, is the great strength of the Briscoes, of the family. The Pew family has some of the strongest faith and some of the strongest principles I've seen. They're just wonderful, inspirational people, and to go to Delaware and see up close the kind of people they are and get to know them better, because I had really just gotten to started 
working with Mark and Jay and become friends with them in this year. And that's why I went to bat so many times to get them in AEW because when I acquired ROH, I was excited. Now I can work with the Briscoes and we can do this. But I had tried to get them in AEW many times. And, um, you know, I something that I believe would make Jay really proud is that eventually he did become a big part of the AEW legacy and do something there and have that tribute to him on his what would have been his 39th birthday and to celebrate the life and legacy of Jay Briscoe and AEW and, of course, in Ring of Honor where he's one of the greatest wrestlers ever. And, you know, it's a very important tribute to so many of us to have the Jay Briscoe reach for the Sky Ladder match and for Mark Briscoe to wrestle and try to win that big singles title that means so much to him that he's chased that World TV Championship against a wrestler that he's never beaten, Samoa Joe, who has a real rivalry with the Briscoe family. So I'm very excited about the whole event and uh, we'll always think of Jay Briscoe, our friend that we miss. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Uh, okay, Will Washington from Grapsity is next and John Pollock from Post Wrestling will follow Will. Your line's open, Will. Will, can you hear us? How about if we go to John Pollock and we'll we'll try Will after John? Can we get John on? Yes. John? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Tony. I just wanted to ask a bit about, you were just referencing with Mark Briscoe, if you can just take us to that week that led up to the match in Lexington with Jay Lethal. Obviously, there was a major change in attitude regarding the Briscoes, but to get Mark Briscoe onto, onto TBS, can you just tell us a little bit about what had to go into that? And if I could also sneak in, if had there not been an injury, were there any plans for Will Ospreay this weekend regarding the Supercard show? Thank you. Yeah, Will, Will was going to be on the show. Uh, and it, I think Will Ospreay is tremendous, and I would love to work with Will Ospreay anytime. I think he's he's a great wrestler in New Japan Pro Wrestling, has great stars, they're great partners, and through the partnership together, you know, we've been able to build a wider audience for Will on AEW Dynamite, and certainly would, would like to have him involved in Ring of Honor. Um, that's a multi-part question, so let me go back and answer the part that is the most prominent and important uh, it was a, you know, it's a situation nobody ever anticipated what happened with Mark Briscoe. And it's also a completely different management team now than it was the team that had not approved their appearances in the past. And also, it was a different management team before the hat that had not approved their appearances. So this was the first time this group had the... Uh, the opportunity to reflect on it, but also, frankly, is a completely different circumstance for many reasons that you know I, are very challenging to get into. But obviously, we all miss Jay Briscoe very much, and he is a great wrestler. And I was so grateful, so 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 grateful and appreciative that we were able to have tributes to Jay Briscoe on what would have been his 39th birthday with Mark Briscoe versus Jay Lethal in a great match and a great tribute to him with a with the locker room coming out and paying their respects to Jay Briscoe and the outpouring of love that was happening in real life around that time throughout that week and the week prior when, when he, Jay passed. And uh, so it was a very challenging and different circumstance than there ever had been before. So it is also very personal, frankly. Uh, so that was that. Was that. And uh, hopefully got both of your two distinct questions in there. Thanks. Thanks, John. Will Washington, we're going to try you again. Will, your line, are you open? Will? Yeah, he's open, but I think it's his mic that isn't connected correctly. Yeah, how about this? I've got a write-in question from Max Everett uh, from Sports Kita. So I'm going to... Um, Go with that one right now, Tony, and then we'll try Will one more time after you uh, answer Max's question. And that question is, considering your existing relationship with New Japan, with AEW, is there a chance we can see another G1 Supercard or cross-promoted event in the future? 
There's definitely more opportunities for partnerships with AEW and uh, Ring of Honor with New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's been such an unprecedented great partnership, great relationship, and it's something I never would have thought was possible when AEW launched. And uh, it really started when uh, before I acquired Ring of Honor, but then there's a great history with New Japan and Ring of Honor too, so it makes all the sense in the world. They have a great history together. Uh, so that was a very successful event they've collaborated on. I think Forbidden Door is a great partnership that can bring all the companies together, and there's other opportunities too. Um, I think that we could pay legacy to the great spirit of Mr. Inoki, who was a dreamer, and in his dream, he brought a lot of the wrestling companies together. He had a, a Festival of Peace in Los Angeles. I wore the T-shirt through junior high and high school of the Peace Festival card. Chris Jericho was there, uh, and it was a great idea. And now I honestly think it was one of those ideas, in many ways, it was ahead of its time, and like a lot of great ideas. You know, there's many things that uh, would make sense uh, later or sooner, but timing is everything in life in so many ways, or at least it's a large percentage, a large aspect of life is timing. And uh, now is the right time for those kinds of ideas. So yes, I do think stuff like that, ideas of that nature or that specific one even, those are great thoughts. And there's definitely more opportunities like that that are going to make sense in this partnership with AEW and Ring of Honor, both along with New Japan Pro Wrestling and the international partnership we have in that spirit. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Max. <clears throat> Will, you're up one more time. Hello. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Hey, we hear you. Yep. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Uh, so, Tony, I actually wanted to touch on a topic that was really a big focus of the last uh, media call that you had regarding Ring of Honor. Um, and that was where you kind of touched on the topic of William Regal. You have to forgive me because there's actually – two media calls going on right now and paying attention to the Shawn Michaels media call. He just answered a question regarding William Regal. And one of the things he noted uh, in that uh, on his answer regarding Regal was that Regal had really not been participating much at all in NXT and had mostly been involved in the main roster over there, which seems kind of contradictory to what you had noted on the last call regarding the reason that Regal was granted his release. Um, I was wondering, is that part of any of the understanding you were given at the time, or do you believe that matters had changed regarding that? Well, I that was how it was explained to me at the time. I can't really speak to what's happening because I'm not there. And uh, But if that's what they say, then I believe it's true. And uh, I, that's, you know, that was at least the understanding I got for why it made sense for him. But uh, I, that is one example where I tried to be very accommodating. And uh, that was, I guess, it did come up on the last Ring of Honor pay-per-view media call for Final Battle. And it was a personal situation in many ways, but I tried to be accommodating to him. And even if it wasn't necessarily accommodating to all the things we were doing at the time. So uh, that's interesting, though. I didn't realize, I also didn't realize there was another media call going on right now, but that's fun. That's uh, in the spirit of wrestling competition and all the great events happening over the weekend. Okay, <clears throat> thanks, Will. Um, Tony, we've got time for one, maybe two more. Are you up for two, or you got? Time? Yeah, sure. Okay, um, we're going to go with Samantha Shipman from the Daily DDT. Uh, so, Ms. Samantha, you're going to go now, and then I'm going to spring a surprise. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but we're going to have one more to follow Samantha. So, Samantha, you're up. Samantha, you need to unmute your line. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Hi, Tony. Um, so I have a question about the women's match for Super Card of Honor because two weeks ago we heard Athena call out Yuka Sakazaki, but then tonight's match is obviously going to be a great one between Athena and Emmy, but then the winner... We don't know who they'll be facing at Supercard of Honor. So can you fill us in on what's going on with Yuka? Is she injured? Is she, could she not get here? Is there something else Have you read on? the spoilers for tonight's show? I have not. <laughs> okay, well, I don't want to say what happens on tonight's show or okay. talk about tonight's show. 
So, um, but I think a lot of people have, and if you follow international wrestling, you could have been abroad, and there's a lot of exciting things happening, and obviously Emmy Sakura has been here, and given the timing of travel and all of this, it's going to be a very exciting show. There will be a great match on the card, and we'll clarify tonight on the show uh, who it's going to be, but also it's important to have great matches on the show because fans pay for the streaming service, and they deserve to get great matches every Thursday on ROH. So... It was a match Athena really wanted also was for Russell Emmy, and Yuka was not here for this episode of TV uh, that we had just done uh, in Orlando, the fourth episode, or the first three. You know, she would not have been around for the first four episodes at all, but that is definitely a match Athena wants, but she also wanted to wrestle Emmy this week on episode five, uh, which airs tonight. And coming out of that, either... Sakura or Athena will defend the championship. This match, obviously, we taped it last night. So, you know, I think 90-something percent of you on the phone, I suspect, know what happened based on knowing the wrestling media and people read the event spoilers and then go back and watch the show, typically, in the, the news media. So there actually was, to your point, it was a, it's a good question, but um, that will unfold tonight, and that's a great segue into talking about uh, Honor Club and our watchrowage.com and the great matches we put on the show every week including Athena versus Emi Sakura tonight and Athena versus Willow Nightingale, just to go back and once again talk about what a great match that was in the main event of the second episode. So I'm excited for Athena versus Emi tonight, which is a great match, and uh, excited for the what, a, uh, excited for the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship match tomorrow night at Supercard after we get a great match tonight on WatchRH.com. Thanks. Thanks, Samantha. All right, well, we spun the wheel and landed on Bill Bodkin from the pop break. So we're going to bring it home with Bill Bodkin. Bill, are you ready to go? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, Tony, thanks for taking the call. Um, I have just a question. You've often talked about your booking of um, Dynamite and Ring of Honor, two different things. You talk about more of the freedom you have with Ring of Honor, not due to, to breaks and Nielsen's and all that stuff like that. However, has booking a second company, has that influenced how you book Dynamite? Because as if I've been watching since the first show ever, like many of us on this call, I've been noticing there's been this new, exciting way, and, and we're getting more storylines and different guys coming in and being booked, and I feel like the show is regained. An exciting show is even more exciting than ever. So has the booking of Ring of Honor influence the way you book Dynamite and Rampage? That's a great question, and yes, it absolutely has. I have been more reinvigorated and excited about doing the episodic tapings of Ring of Honor in that world and in a crazy way because then the person I just had this conversation with is actually somebody who's been amazing and a big focal point of that attention and the way I feel, and that's Kenny Omega. Um, and I told him, I said to Kenny, I feel like more, he asked me about it and he's uh, probably one of the ultimate students. I think it's fair to say he is one of the uh, very articulate and intelligent students of wrestling. And he, uh, asked me about it and I told him that I feel more invigorated doing Ring of Honor than I ever have before. I feel like, you know, people thought it was going to be a drain because I already have several jobs and do several things and, and work all the time already. So, but I really love doing it, and I feel like it's been additive to both companies, and there's great synergies, and I get more ideas, and I feel like the sh it's helped everything, and I feel like the Dynamite shows have been stronger than ever, and we just did one of our best pay-per-views with Revolution. Dynamite and Ring of Honor TV in recent weeks have been really great, and we have great opportunities. The all-access premiere is a new opportunity, and a lot of new opportunities. Just to reiterate, I have a huge announcement coming on AEW Dynamite on Wednesday. We had a big week, you know, we just had a big week with a great show and a series of great shows since Revolution. That was a big event, very successful for us, followed by this, this great all-access premiere that's been so well-received and had a great soft launch uh, following in, in, uh, the uh, NCAA coverage. And now will be every Wednesday night. And now Ring of Honor has what, could be one of the greatest events in Ring of Honor history, and in many ways, it's going to be one of the most successful business events. I think it's fair to say, in the the, the way the TV's been received and the business it's done, and now the, the tickets we sold, which is 
going to be one of the record ticket gates in the history of Ring of Honor of over 21 years, what we're doing tomorrow night. Uh, I definitely feel more reinvigorated and excited about the booking and doing both shows than I ever have before, and I think they're distinct. And both shows have been maybe at their all-time, some of the strongest quality stuff. And, it, and it has, I believe by doing great wrestling, we have a chance to only only grow and build and, and do better and better. And, and so I appreciate your question, and I think it's a very astute question, and I absolutely do feel that way. And I'm glad that to hear that you and, and other people, too, that have said that are seeing it. And, it, you know, it means a lot. Uh, and it's 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 really it's a lot of work and i love it and it's it's fun work and and when you get that kind of feedback it's what makes it all so worthwhile uh so thank you again all right <clears throat> well tony um I, I think i speak on behalf of everybody who joined us today for thanking you you've literally crisscrossed the united states this week uh nfl aw ring of honor you're still going to be on the move uh and it's been uh, amazing that you've uh held up and, and made the time for everybody here today. So we thank you. Uh, any, any closing thoughts, Tony? Thank you so much, Jim, for giving me uh, the opportunity. I'm very grateful to everybody participating in this call. I'm sorry I didn't get to answer every single person's question. If you attend this post pay-per-view scrum, I'll try to get everybody to at least answer one of their questions. And uh, I wanna thank you all in the wrestling media because uh, you all are what makes this so successful in so many ways because I know you all love this and you it's not always the highest paying or the most fulfilling work but we all love wrestling and I think that's why almost everybody on this call is here for the most part and uh, you know that that's pretty cool and also uh, the, the coverage you give a ring of honor and AEW it, it is what has allowed us to continue to thrive so I appreciate you giving us fair coverage and giving us the opportunity uh in a uh, space that hasn't seen uh this kind of uh a company doing this kind of business model that we're doing uh with AEW or a company that is in new hands and is an exciting new chapter of its history like ring of honor and uh like i said for AEW next week i have a huge announcement on dynamite coming it's very important i think it will generate some coverage because i'll continue to talk about that i have something big to come on AEW next week after a series of great episodes, but also uh, I cannot emphasize strongly enough how much I appreciate you all attending this Supercard uh, press conference call because I am so excited about the Supercard event. Like you said, Jim, I'm on a whirlwind tour of business, media, NFL, AEW, Premier League, so many things happening right now, and I'm very excited about what's happening in the world of wrestling with all of you and hope to see a lot of you tomorrow in Los Angeles at the event. And if we don't see you there, hopefully uh, you watch it on pay-per-view and I hope you all enjoy it very much. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Tony. And, and I'll echo thanks to everybody that's joined us. We're now at the end of our time. So per custom, we're going to be distributing our audio recording to all attendees here shortly. And finally, I'd like, I'd like to thank you again for being part of the call and hope you have a great day. Looking forward to Joining us tomorrow for the Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor show, either in person or on pay-per-view tomorrow night. Thanks, everyone.